Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to the TT Pod. It feels like it's been forever since we last did one. I can't remember what it was. In fact, let me check. Was it Man United? I believe it probably was. Um, <laughs> no, it was a quarterfinal draw. It was me and Ellie. We came on at lunchtime, yes. which was crazy. I've never <laughs> seen a YouTube stream at that time in my life. Um, <laughs> and we spoke about the Europa League draw. Um, but we actually didn't do one for Man United, which I think is quite poor from us, to be fair. But I was not in any fit to um, talk about that game after it. So I think it's probably for the best that we didn't. Mike, how are you, my friend? I'm sober. I'm great. I'm doing well. Uh, no, I'm happy to good be start. on. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy to be back on, lads. It's always good when I get to chat with you, lads, about football. And uh, yeah, no, all good, mate. Perfect. And Elliot, how are you doing, yeah. my friend? Same as I'm, I'm looking forward to everyone's uh, interested and surely not controversial takes on who is going yeah, to report the manager. And what is it, 50 days? It's 48 now, isn't it? Was it two days ago you tweeted that one out? I'm not trying to count down the days. I just want to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it makes me feel sick. It still makes me feel sick that the day's going to come and it's it's not too far away now. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get into it. We'll probably touch on Klopp a lot in this video as well. But basically, this stream is going to be us talking about free. The three main ones, but I think something's changed slightly and I will get to that bit uh, and address it a bit more when we get to that stage. I think one of them is now, from my opinion, from what I've seen, he's out of the running. We're still going to talk about him at least. Um, We're also going to talk about wild cards. So anyone that we've not got on the top three that we're going to speak about, maybe like the Nargosmans or people like that, that you guys might feel would be decent. Let us know. Get involved in the comments. Give us your idea. We've got some tweets as well. Some people replied to a tweet we put out today. It's all about trying to find for us who we think the best possible manager is to come in after Jurgen Klopp. Let's face it, regardless of who it is, no one's going to be Klopp. No one's going to be anywhere near close to Klopp, I don't think. But we have to have this conversation, guys. He's leaving in two months. So I thought, whilst there's no football to talk about, apart from silly international games, we'll do it now. Um, Before we do get into it, I've got a little video to play from our podcast sponsor. Take a look at this. Metal Player Illustration Art and Fomex Spud Cards. Metal Player Moments Art. Scan the cue, our code to watch iconic moment. Metal Printed Gaming Quotes and Art. Printed on 3mm Dibbit. Email to customize your print. Yeah, I actually made that video. Um, so your foot card, just uh, top up that little bit of money, you know. That's a class card video, card that man, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, yes, <laughs> mate, you made a cap cut as well. Um, but yeah, check out yourfootcard.com, guys. Amazing, amazing company. Use TT Pod at checkout for 15% off. It just saves me from having to show the products and talk about them every single time. Oh, that's a bit easier. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Jordan's in the comments. How are you doing, mate? Hope you're good. And also, Dr. OD says, Nagelsmann, should be i think that means oh ahead ahead yeah we will get into that but first of all i'm going to change that branding because those comments are way too big we're going to go back to bubbles let's have a look Classic. at this yeah that's there you go there you um, go also just before we do get into it tom little will be making an appearance in the stream i can't promise in what form but tom little does have a segment in the stream you guys already know tom little on twitter already know what manager he's going to be talking about um <laughs> But the first manager we're going to discuss, Mike, and I've got, again, I made this. I'm putting in the work rate right now. Um, mm. I did spoke conceded wrong, so apologies. But I'm not even that. looking at that, um, you know? Hey, listen, not even looking at Mike, that. Yeah, no one sees it. <laughs> I'm going to let you take take lead, mate. Look at these stats. Shabby Alonso is at Leverkusen right. right now. He's unbeaten in the Bundesliga. Um, people think, people have this weird thing saying it's his first season. It's not. He came in and got him top six when they were near the relegation zone. So mm-hmm. it's not his first season. People seem to say it is. It's not. Um, and those season totals are from this season. So points per game, he's got 2.74. Win percentage of 86.8. He's scoring 2.87 goals per game, which is almost free, which is crazy. Goals conceded per 90, 0.79. 38 games, 33 wins, five draws, zero defeats. And in the bottom right, yep. you can see his career totals as well. So... Talk to me, Mike. Where are you with Shabby Alonso? And is he your first choice, I guess, is the best place to start? 
listen, before I get started, there are 700 people watching on Twitter right now. So to those 700 people, if you want to drop a comment or you want to follow us on YouTube, that would be a great little touch. So, you know, we know you're there. I can see you. So if you're <laughs> able to do it, I recommend doing it. We make content regularly. So make sure you tap in. Uh, but on Alonso, listen, Alonso is 100% um, the first choice for most people. Uh, I, and listen, I can see the argument against it for sure, because some people would say that when he came in, yes, he took Leverkusen out of the relegation zone, but they were a team that shouldn't have been there in the first place. I liken his impact on Leverkusen in that moment, similar to Redknapp at Spurs. When Redknapp took over at Spurs, Spurs were in the relegation zone, but everyone knew they shouldn't have been near it. They, they were too good a team in general. Similarly, he came in a unique system at the time and brought Spurs up to a point where they were more successful than they had been in the past. Redknapp at that point was touted as a phenomenal manager. Now, Alonso has done a similar thing with Leverkusen to a much higher degree in the sense he's took him out of that, altered the system, and has got a very young side playing a you know very good football. Um, questionable performances in Europe, but overall in the league, they've been absolutely phenomenal. Um, the thing that people will push against Alonso is a lack of experience, but I think I really think the limited time and the lim limited data that we have on Alonso is all very, very positive. Um, there's one thing Hughes and Edwards do in recruitment and throughout their history, and Edwards, we definitely know this, is they go off data. And uh, through interviews that you've seen with the likes of Ben Jacobs or, or whoever, when it comes to data, Alonso and Amarin are the two that are excelling head and shoulders above everyone else, and Alonso etches it. And I can't remember who reported it. I know the Anfield Talk did uh, tweet out the source at one point, but it was uh, it was Alonso is you know we're putting ninety percent of our effort into Alonso. Basically, he is our number one target. So with that in mind, it, it's clear to us who the ambition was or still is for us. So. That, that's that's what you I know. That, Paul, sorry, I think it was actually Paul Joyce that said that, wasn't it? That he's number. I believe, one. Yeah, I believe it was. I didn't want to. Didn't want to get Joyce, it wrong. Which is as good as it comes. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have Joyce a look while you're talking. Just confirm. Yeah, have a look. Yeah. Listen, put, you know, the, the way the Anfield talk works is, you know, if we put a green sauce up, that is the creme de la creme. You know, that's the that's the, that's the one, right? And you know, that's what Paul Joyce put out. So when you when you think think of that, you know, you do see a lot of Bayern and German media in general say, you know, Alonso will choose Munich no matter what, but Munich have always played these games, whether it be with players, whether it be with managers, whatever. This is how Munich operate, and um, they've done it throughout. You know, throughout time, they the Harry, the Harry Kane, not the Harry Kane one, the Paulinho one was a great example of it. Um, German media were talking about Paulinho as if he'd already got the shirt in his hands, and then he never went. Hmm. He stayed at home. Um, so you know, you always got to take what comes out of their mouths with a little, you know, with a pinch of salt. But um, yeah, overall, just. Uh, Alonso is the number one target for me, and you know we gotta we we just gotta push for him. But obviously, there's other people uh, there's other people that I think may think otherwise. You know. Yeah, and just before you go, Elliot, I did find here we go. The Bayer Leverkusen head coach Shabby Alonso is the front runner, although FSG are also likely to interview Ruben Amarim, the sporting Lisbon coach, and that was from the 28th of February, so just just under a month ago. Um, so that's from Paul Joyce. I actually think Paul Joyce should have a tear on his own, to be honest, because let's face it, he's not the only one. Fakir. <laughs> Listen, I don't think he was. Was he wrong with Fakir though? No. Listen, we let him off on Fakir. Yeah? That was like a decade ago. Also, shout out to the 1.1 thousand of you that are in here right now. Go subscribe to the YouTube. Make sure go over there right now. We're live on there too. Got to keep yeah. shouting out. YouTube's though. far better because you can you can like reply to each other's comments and stuff like that. If you're watching on Twitter, that's amazing. But um, YouTube is obviously a platform that we are massively trying to grow on. So if you could switch over to YouTube at some stage, that would be uh, fantastic. But um, yeah, listen, yeah, but... Elliot, Paul Joyce is we know obviously if I cared whatever happened there. We don't know. <laughs> um, you yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, but Paul Joyce said this, and also Fabrizio Romano did a, a, a similar one as well. I obviously, I yeah, think well. he's probably got it from um, Paul Joyce. But um, yeah, first of all, obviously, do you back what what Mike was saying about Alonso? And um, you know, if he is Liverpool's front runner, how likely do you think it is that maybe he, we, we go and get him? And that Tom says, "Be careful what you say." Viva Amarim. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to say something as controversial as, as Tom's been for the past how many months is it go I hate Alonso I don't want Alonso to go on but I don't think any Liverpool fan has one reason for not wanting Alonso I understand Mike 
saying the experience. But of course, he, he had last season as well a bit of a. Uh, on paper, he's he's on course for hopefully not because that means Liverpool don't win a trophy. An unbeaten treble <laughs> doesn't get much better than that when you when you're looking at someone to go and take over the Liverpool job after the clock. It's a massive, massive thing. This and it's going to be the same for every single manager who's linked to it. Even if it is Alonso, I think everyone has to take you know a step back. Liverpool aren't going to be as good as they are. So every manager deserves time. So even if it is not Alonso as well, everyone deserves the patience of fans. So it's going to be a massive thing for everyone to get used to. But I think that's why I'm wary of everyone wanting Alonso because there has to be a step back of maybe looking at other options. Alonso is absolutely the first choice. But I think there's another manager we'll get on to. I think I'd be as content with as Alonso, not Amarim. <laughs> Sorry, Sam, but wow. there's other people out there who, you know, are as good and maybe could even be better in, in similar, you know, boats as or have been as Alonso. So I, I think this is just me from my pessimistic point of view. have to be wary in case it is an Alonso. And I, and I understand taking the German report to the pinch yourself because I'm pretty sure Florian Plessenberg, he, I'm pretty sure he took a Harry Kane shirt into a Tottenham press conference. With, yeah, with yeah. Listen, he's about as, yeah, listen, he's as reliable as my granddad was and he had dementia. So, like, I'm not... Oh, wow. I am going to be there. There's no doubt about that because Tico can't last. If they don't, when it doesn't look like they're going to win the league, cross the world under doors. Bayern, uh, Tuchel's not had a good job there. He's not had a good time there at all. So they're going to yeah. be looking on as well. So that's that's a fact. We know that's going to be a fact. So in case Alonso doesn't, I think we all have to maybe just be a bit mm-hmm. wary and go, listen, it's not yeah. going to be the end of the world. I think it's going to be, you know, we have to go for him because of his mm. But I think the one question mark would be maybe the same with Amarim is the back three. I think is would he go with the back three at Liverpool or is it just something that he's been, you know, getting used to because of the circumstances that Leif goes? And I think we know mm-hmm. Amarim is his preferred three at the back, has been for a good few years now at sport. And so it's, it's one one question mark. So I think what amazing mind said Liverpool are a back three club, which you can probably yeah. make an argument for, can't you? So I think that's the one question mark at the moment I'd have about Alonso if he would want to do a back three. Would it enhance Van Dijk's career at Liverpool as well? That's another thing. But that's going into it as if Alonso... That's going into it, yeah. Ball. Ben, yeah. you made a good point uh, today, and it's going off the back of what Elliot said, regarding the fan base, at least from what you, you can see from social media, is very much... Alonso won nothing, right? You know, I tweet, mm-hmm. I tweeted out today and a few of my friends agree. It's very much feels like a Bellingham 2.0 situation, right? Where all the eggs are in one basket. And if we don't get that, then everything's going to collapse. We didn't get Bellingham, our midfield's flourishing. I seen a yeah. tweet from you today and I don't want to misquote you, but it, it came across to me that you are now a little bit more central in your perspective from where you were, I'd say like a month ago, which is, which is just down to consuming more information, which is the right way of being. So what's your perspective on it? Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think at first, obviously, I didn't really... And it's the same with me signing players. Like, mm. you know, if you've not necessarily looked into or heard of that player, Endo, for example, you you can turn your nose up at them sometimes if there's somebody that you desperately want. So, for example, it was Caicedo or Lavia. We didn't get either. Then it was Endo. And it's like, well, don't really know this guy. Doesn't necessarily mean he's crap, but I think the natural way of thinking is meh, it's a bit of a drop-off. It's not. He's been better than both of those players this season by an absolute distance. Um, Same with Bellingham. Like, again, I was on the Bellingham train for 18 months before we were ultimately heartbroken. I think it was Fulham we played. And at halftime, Paul just felt the need to tell us that he was going around Madrid. It's like, why? Why are you doing that? We're already on a losing streak and to rub salt into the wound. You've told us Jude Bellingham's not coming. Um, But you're spot on. And I think I have been subject to this. And I have said before as well, like it has to be Alonso. And I still stand by my opinion that I do want him. He's my absolute number one favourite because he's Liverpool legend. He just knows the club. He knows the fans. I don't think he has to earn the fans over as much as others would do because he comes back to Anfield. Yeah, exactly. He knows the club. He knows the city. He knows the passion. He he knows what he has to deliver, which is ultimately trophies. And I'm not saying, you know, Amarim wouldn't because at the end mm-hmm. of the day, Liverpool are one of the biggest clubs in the world. Any manager coming here that knows ultimately that's what we want. But um, yeah, I just think there's so much about Alonso, so much good stuff that you guys have already spoken about. Um, such a young manager as well. So that's exciting because if you get Alonso now and he does well, you could have him potentially for a decade, maybe even longer than what Klopp was here for. Um, but you're right. I think some fans have been sort of on on Twitter and in spaces and stuff. And there was one today from Lois, shout out Lois, great friend of mine. She was saying that, um, not her, sorry, people in the space were again going on about this. You know, we could be finished if it's not Alonso. It has to be Alonso. And 
I'm like 70-30% Alonso to Amarin right now. It could change, you know, if Amarin yeah. goes and wins the league or whatever, like, whatever, the opinion can change. It's allowed to change. But mm-hmm. no matter who my number one favourite is, I can't, and like, I think Elliot said it just before we went live, I've not watched enough sporting to have a proper opinion on Amarin. You know, yep. we are going to hear from somebody that has or claims to have. <laughs> but, but, um, I haven't. I well, watched them in the Europa League, and yes, it wasn't great against that Atlanta. It wasn't, but Europe is a very tough place to go. You know, in these European competitions, yep. it's very difficult. Um, but for Alonso, I don't think he's done anything really so far that makes me mm-hmm. doubt him. You know, people say, "Oh, he struggled against Carabag." They still went through. They still they progressed. Still like I... what we could struggle against teams and progress. That's what it's all about. Knockout football is about wins and winning games, and that's what he did. Um, so just finishing on Alonso because I think you know we're all pretty clear that well, Elliot I think he's got someone else which is interesting to say who could be as good as him um, I feel like he uh, most of the fan base that is who they want I think that's pretty clear um, mm. but I agree with you Mike I don't think it's right to just think okay if it's not Alonso mm-hmm. back to mid table not mid table we've never been mid table but back to like sit for seventh place uh, we go sort of thing yeah, I think I think just on just on that, I will I will just segue to say if you're watching this and you haven't liked the video, now's a great time. Uh, <laughs> listen, I'm gonna do this. All, I'm gonna do this whole video. It needs to be done. We're too good to not have the attention. I don't do it enough to be fair. I, I, no, bro, I, we're too right. good. Listen, we're too good at what we do. You're too good at what you do. Never mind me. You're too good at what you do to not do this more. So if you're watching this video, drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. It's needed. It helps us. And comment if you disagree with us because I want to hear opinions. Let's go through some right now. 60 to 40 in Amiron's favor for me. I think we have more data about Amiron compared to Alonso. That's a valid argument, which we are going to come on to. So stick around for that because we've got a guy that was in Amiron's home and and Tom Little (laughs) the last five years. So you've got to stick around for that. Luke, whether it's Alonso or Amiron, we will be in good hands with whoever Edwards and Hughes. Luke, I love that. That's a neutral perspective. That's not echoes enough. Yeah, Yeah, Luke, that's that's why we love you, brother. But I, I will say this. I think when it comes to Alonso or Amarin or whoever Elliot's secret third choice is, which is <laughs> one, right? I, I reckon it's Roy Hodgson. I think you're going to say Roy Hodgson. Yeah. I think. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think whoever it is, if you go off the way Hughes and Edwards operate and the way our club operates, I feel like the structure going forward behind the scenes, whether it's transfers, academy products, etc., and the core concepts of what it means to play for Liverpool that have already been put in place won't alter too much. Style of football camp, without a doubt. But in terms of transfer targets, I can't imagine that changing away too much. It feels like that's already clear. We're, we're after a, re, a restructure of the defence. We're after centre-backs that can play, that are in a certain age demographic between 18 and 22, because that's all we've been linked with for the last... Three that's why, sorry, Mike, it's important to, yeah. to question the back three thing, isn't it? Because there's yeah. going to be... Liverpool will maybe edging towards that at the back end of last season. It's, it's mm. kind of in its head. So it's, it is an important thing, that because changing a system completely... It would be a massive thing for a manager trying to implement at Liverpool, and especially when maybe the the fans are a bit edgy anyway, because it's just seeing the great one of the greatest managers that they'll probably see, especially some of us because of, yeah. of our age, you know, leave. So I think it is one thing defenders is a must, but is it going to be defenders who are going to be wide centre halves? Listen, I'm going going a bit ahead of ourselves again, but it is a genuine thing because Alonso and Amaro who look like the two front runners, three backs. That's why we know majority of their games are. So it, it is a it's a massive thing for me anyway to look at. Well, what's before we move on to Amir on the stage is you know the floor is yours, Elliot. Who else? Well, we... I, know, right, we'll let, I think we'll let Tom maybe have his. Really? Bit... Okay. <laughs> is is how you say it, Amir on? Let's just let go on, Tom. Hey Ben, I, I freestyle with pronunciations. Oh, I mean, we'll, we'll, I, oh, we'll, we'll listen to Tom in a minute, and whatever Tom says, that's what <laughs> we'll we'll go go with. That. Um, Well, Tom speaks Portuguese, so we should be able to. <laughs> yeah. Um. This is the Amir on um stats at least um from this season. Similar to Alonso, really, obviously he's had a few more defeats, but five more defeats than Alonso. Um, but they are top of the league. I think they're still in the cup. Um, listen, again, I don't understand why, and I don't like the fact that, and I said this to someone on Space earlier, people were going on like, one lad said, I don't respect the Bundesliga. No, sorry, I don't respect mm. the, the Portuguese league, but I respect the Bundesliga. And I was like, hang on a minute. The Bundesliga has <laughs> had one winner for the last 10 years. This guy, and again, I was playing devil's advocate because I want Alonso, but I don't want to be disingenuous to Amarim, who, from the experts and the people that are paid to write about these things, their reports on him are glistening. Um, 
So I said, okay, you don't respect the Bundesliga. That's a one winner in the last 10 years that's Bayern Munich. This guy's had to compete against three teams, and Tom's probably going to allude to that in a minute. Um, Sporting, Porto, and Benfica. And when he came in, and I got this from Tom because I've already watched the video, um, they were the third best out of those three teams. So he's had to dethrone those two teams and then take them to be the best. And it's like, how can you say you don't respect that league, but then respect a league that's had one winner in 10 years? That makes no sense to me. I don't know if any of you guys agree. I, I, did you want to go, Elliot? What do you think? I'll, go on, I'll, follow, I'll follow. All right. <laughs> You'll follow. I like that. <laughs> yeah, go on. I'll go first. Listen, I, I see where he's coming from. I think Amaron, in a sense, is. Can we stop the... calling him Amaron? It sounds like we're sounding the keep... Newcastle yeah. United. Ruben, 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 yeah. Ruben. <laughs> Ruben. Call him Ruben. Ruben. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, my bad. <laughs> You're probably right. I mean, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll go Ruben for now. You guys know my track record with pronunciation. Ruben Neves. Yeah, Ruben. Yeah, Ruben Neves, the Portuguese fella. Listen, him. Overall, I think when you when you you look at Ruben, it's similar to when United and Arsenal were going. <laughs> Sorry, I can't take right. it. To you. <laughs> what do you want me to call him? <laughs> what do you want me to call him? The Portuguese man. Bloody hell, Tom, when are you when I need you, mate? Honestly, God, you know what? Sack my point. Play the video. Yeah, is, that point. A, is that a surprise birthday party, believe it or not? That's where he is. Yeah, he's, he's at his house right now. Yeah. He's Ruben's he's niece. securing the deal. He's probably going through he's the contract. the deal. He works for Hughes and Edwards. You guys don't realise. But this fella, anyway, I, listen, this fella's... Yeah, I've, I've lost my point. Just sack the pair of you. Um, Elliot, what were you going to say, mate? Come on. No, no, I've no. I've lost my point about Ruben. <laughs> Listen, um, let's hear the sales pitch. Let's hear the sales pitch. Yeah, I would yeah, I'd like to hear that before we maybe take some of his points away from him. Yeah, great move. Okay, you want to hit you want to hear from Tom now, okay? Let's hear Tom's. So okay. for those who don't ladies know, Tom Little. Let's go. Sorry. I was gonna no, say, you ladies it. and gentlemen, all the way from the Wirral Merseyside. <laughs> wall. Um, Absolute talking wall. about Ruben Amarin. Right. Let me just say if you disagree with his point, so if you think he's waffling at any point, please just stay with it. Because we're going to come back and we're going to stop. But he's not. Oh, come on. been messing around. Yeah, it's comments. a very good video. Comment I've already watched it. Um, it's very, <laughs> very good. And he makes some good points. And he probably but, will make you think, actually, you know what? This is a great manager. So ben, there he is. Before you press play, though. Trust... Sorry. Before you press play, when you disagree with him, comment. Let us know what you disagree with specifically and we can harp him back to it. That's all I was going to say. It's six minutes as well, by the way. So we'll be back here in six minutes. Get a drink and just enjoy. Tom Little waffling about Ruben Amarin. I've bought me list, my trusted list of Ruben Amarin prop. And I'll just go through it real quick with just to show that Ruben Amarin really is the best option for the next Liverpool manager. Firstly, Amarin's a winner. Plain and simple. Ruben Amarin is a winner. He's got one league title and three domestic cups already. That that That's remarkable with the teams that he's had, Braga and Sporting. Both of them teams, to achieve what they've done, they were underdogs in them. Sport especially to win that league title when they were predicted to finish fourth. Incredible. And whilst Jesse did win that league title in his first season and he hasn't won one since, he came second, just narrowly missing out to one of the best Porto sides of recent years and then came fourth. Um, this year, he's currently top of the Portuguese league by a point. And he's got a game in hand on both his rivals, Benfica and Porto behind him. So he could extend that gap to four points. And he's also 2-1 up in the semi-finals of the Portuguese Cup against Benfica, so he's on course for his second double with Sporting, which would be remarkable, all things considered. Secondly, he's in, he's remarkable, he's absolutely incredible at working under budgetary restrictions. Ruben Amaru has been at Sporting Lisbon for four seasons now. 2020, so the 2020-2021, the 21-2022, the 22-2023, and the 23-2024 season. Four seasons, he's got a net spend of 120 million, positive. So he has made 120 million more than he's spent on transfers, and he's made the sport inside better, and he's been competitive with it, also while making that much profit. So much so that five of Sporting's ten record sales are under Ruben Amarim. Remarkable stuff, remarkable. Now, when you're selling that many players, when you're making that much money, there's a lot of squad over overhaul. You need to be, you need to be good at working with your youngsters. And Ruben Amarim is the creme de la creme, the piece de resistance of working with youngsters. I'm just going to list off all the names of players that he's had a hand in helping with their developments. Nuno Mendes, Pedro Gonçalves, Gonzalo Inacio, Marcus Edwards, Mateus Nunes, Pedro Porro, João Palinha, Mamalugate, 
Usman Diamande, Morton Hajulmund, Victor Jokerez, Eduardo Carisma, and Galeno. Now, some of them you'll know about, like your Pedro Porro, your Nuno Mendes, your Mamalu Garte, your Joao Palinha, Matias Nunes. Obviously, you should know about Victor Jokerez as well, being one of the best strikers in the world this season. Pedro Gonçalves, incredible little player, someone who I was hoping Liverpool would look at before we got Sobersly. And some of the other ones, you know, people might not know who Galeno is. He, he was the, he's the guy who plays for Porto. That Galeno. The Champions League top scorer, Galeno. Yes. Ruben Aaron helped his development in his time at Braga. So he, some of the places he's worked with and some of the young talent he's developed has been incredible. And with the crop of youngsters that we've got, Bradley, Bajsetic, Kwanzaa, um, Bobby Clark, Jaden Dans, all these young players, and even then if you want to get a little bit older, Curtis Jones, Fabio Carvalho, Harvey Elliott, Gravenberch, Sobersly, all these youngsters that have so much potential to reach, Ruben Amarim can help them reach. He's got such a good track record of it. Now, my fourth point, tactical fit. Ruben Amarim is a fantastic tactical fit. His style of playing philosophy is so similar to Jurgen Klopp. If I remember to, I'll put on the screen um, a screenshot from Squawker that compared how Amarim's team play and how Klopp's team play. It's identical. It's identical. Therefore, it would be an easy fit for the players that we've got right now, and there wouldn't need to be many additions. And the system that he brings in, a 3-4-3, it actually suits a lot of the players. A lot of the players that we've got would just fit seamlessly into that system compared to other managers who might need a bit of time and a bit of adaptation because of the way they play. I think Ruben Aaron would come in and it would be a relatively seamless sort of transition. And finally, number five, very charismatic. I know that Javi Alonso is the favourite, and there's the factor that Amon won't have of Alonso used to play for. He's already got that relationship with the Liverpool fans. But Ruben Amarim won over Sporting fans incredibly quickly. He used to be Benfica captain, if you don't know, Sporting and Benfica are rivals because they both play in, in Lisbon. When Amarim was appointed, there was a lot of um, hatred around the appointment because he used to be brought, uh, Benfica captain. Sorry, When he appointed him from Braga, he used to be the Benfica captain when he was playing. Um, he won them over very quickly won a league in the first season the fans adore him to the point where every single time eh, you could ask most of them the highlight of their week is the Ruben Aaron press conferences because he's just that endearing and charismatic that they can't wait to listen to him and I know what one of the big complaints that's going to be thrown at Amarim is in, in this video it, it, if Ben hasn't done it already I'll be shocked European success now Amarim on the face of it doesn't have a great European track record Um. He got knocked out to Man City in the round of 16. Um, he got knocked out to Juventus in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. And this season he got knocked out by the team that we're about to play, Atalanta, in the round of 16. Um, but context is needed for those. That Champions League finish where they got to the round of 16 and got knocked out by Man City, that was Sporting's best ever European finish. That's the furthest they've ever got in the Champions League. Sounds mad, but yes, that is the furthest they've got in the Champions League around the 16. And they actually drew with um, Man City in one of them legs. And this was a good Man City. I think this was the 18 19. Man City. No, the 18 19, what 21 22. It was a 21 22 City, you know, the one which beat us to a title. That Man City. And the Europa League ones. Yes, he got knocked out to Juventus and Atalanta, two teams that are went into the ties as favourites against them. If his forwards or his defenders, i.e. Sebastian Quartes, if I remember him, if they could finish their dinner, he goes through in those games. The XG's there, the stats are there. You can go you can go back and check. He's he's won games on XG, you know, it's just his forwards didn't finish. And that is a quality thing. Amarim can't do much more when his strikers are missing chances. So that context needs to be applied. If Amarim came to Liverpool, a club with fantastic European pedigree, I don't doubt for a second that it would be a pretty seamless transition. I don't doubt it for a second. Amarim at Sport on has went into a lot of European ties a little bit pessimistically because they're the underdogs. When he comes to Liverpool, he won't do that. He will, he'll puff his chest out and he'll make sure that we go out there and dominate games. I know that there's other names out there. You're, you're Alonso's, you're the Zerbys, you're Norrisman's. But Amarim's the one. I look at all the factors that we could need. Amarim is the one. And I hope that come July 1st, that man is doing his first ever press conference as a Liverpool manager. Because if he is... We'll be on for very, very good things in the future. Wow. A lot of information to digest there from Tom. Massively appreciate you, mate, for doing that for us. Obviously, I know you're unavailable this evening. So, and I know we're bound to you and everyone, you know, 
as a joke with you, but I do massively appreciate that. Um, for taking six minutes out of your day to um, prop your next manager. But Elliot, I think Mike was going to ask you on a question before that, and you wanted to see what Tom said. Mike, do you know what he's going to say? <clears throat> I've I've honestly forgot. I, w- I was going to go on to Elliot's uh, other manager, but I think it's probably best we stay on Amir on for now. Yes, uh, Elliot, we'll... stay on this for a minute, and then we'll yeah, get on to so, it. One hundred percent, Elliot. Before I go on my opinions on what what Tom said there, what were your what's your, what's your initial thoughts? And guys who've listened to that, what are your initial thoughts to what uh, Tom's thoughts were? I mean, his points were all obviously correct. Don't get it wrong, and I, I like you know some aspects of what I've seen. Of of you've got me uh, self conscious now. Pronounce his name wrong, so I'm going to call him Ruben as well, even though I laughed at you. <laughs> uh, but I, I am. I don't know why I couldn't give you a proper full. Re- I am just a bit hesitant. Listen, I said before that every manager is going to be a risk because it's not clapping, and we're all going to have to get used to it, unfortunately. But I just feel like this one could be a bit too much of a risk. I know it's it's a risk for everyone. Every single manager who could get in linked has to have the same amount of patience from every single supporter. But I know Portuguese, we mentioned that. And there's, he's, there's been three big teams, you know, four maybe Braga, they fell off quite a bit in recent years. And he, he's done well. The one league title, though, is... You know, he wins the one league title and then he doesn't kind of back that up, I suppose. That's one little hindrance. But positively thinking, I really, really like uh, the numbers of the forwards. I mean, look at uh, I'm going to butcher his name here. Yeah. <laughs> Victor up front. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's pressure on me, but his numbers are ridiculous. And listen, that makes me yep. think of Nunes. Listen, he, there's going to be such an emphasis on the main striker, Nunes. So, you know, why can't he transfer that emphasis from Victor? <laughs> He's got 56 goals, I think it is, in all competition with 14 assists as well. Listen, though, it's a Portuguese league. The pressure is maybe not as big as maybe on Nunes or the, the quality, should I say. But I think that's my biggest positive. And I'm looking at the back three. I think it, it does enhance Van Dijk's maybe. You could, I, I think he's one of the fittest players about, and he probably can go until maybe pushing 40, you know, for maybe not too much. But if he's in the middle of a back three with pace around him, you know, he's got Diamande and Inaccio. I think maybe pronounce that one wrong as well. That could help as well. He's got them. He's nourished them. He could bring them to Liverpool and it could help the three at the back maybe settle in. So I, th- I do like the positives. His record this season is immense, but I, I'm, I'm, I don't think going off our oh, way, if he wins the title, that should never be the thing. And it won't be the thing with Alonso, I don't think, with Edwards and Hughes, the dates that you mentioned it before, Mike. It's not going to be, oh, if he wins it, we'll get him. That's not how Liverpool work. And I'll be, I'm very confident yeah. because it shouldn't be. It's the same with transfers. Oh, if he go, goes and has a good World Cup, go and get him, goes and has a good Cup in America. It's not how it works. No. So the dates is there, as someone mentioned, probably more for Ruben than Alonso, which, but, Alonso, so should that be? And then he was a youth coach at Madrid. So there's plenty to work with there as well. So I don't think that's going to be a hindrance for mm-hmm. Alonso in this comparison. But I am much more in Alonso than Am- Amarim. <laughs> Not Amarim. No, yeah. so. I, I see where you're coming from. I, th- I think the only... Th- the, the few things there that Tom said that I, I don't necessarily align with, I, th- I think a lot of the development of the youth players, although, yeah, it's, it's good management from him, the Michael, the, the Edwards, well, I was about to say Michael Edwards. The Edwards one was a player that came from Spurs that was already highly thought of from the Spurs Academy. And, you know, so I don't really give him credit for that. And the, the young lads there, Portugal's a good place to go and show yourself as a young lad. But there's a lot of young players that do well in Portugal that don't do well elsewhere. So, um, and there's no doubt he's a very good coach on paper, a very good fit for Liverpool, still a huge jump to make. Hey, thank you very much for the comment, Pedro. Appreciate that, man. Um, listen, as I say, there's no doubt that he, he ticks every box in the data side of things. I don't necessarily have a t- have, oh, there you go, Jamie, <laughs> saying the same thing. Um, I promise I didn't read that comment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, listen, I, I think that there's a, the the appeal from Alonso is more so to do with... Hey, the, mate, sorry, Mike. I was saying it right. Sorry, yeah. You know, well, one day I'll finish a, finish a sentence, Tom. Cheers, sorry, brother. You're you don't have to, me sorry, you're you don't have to just keep reading this, the comments. No, it's, the I know, it just popped up my bad. Tom, it's Ruben Amorim. Oh, so I was pronouncing it right anyway. We were. We were. Yeah. Oh, wait, none of this. Then none you started saying Almiron for some reason. It, it's Never because I felt pressured Almiron. by Elliot. I blame Elliot. <laughs> if, I, if I ever am in the corner, I blame Elliot. Um, oh, I've absolutely lost my train of thought again. Lost God it damn again. it. It's all right. It will come back. <laughs> it will come back. Listen, I'll, I'll talk my way into it. Young players. Listen, now nah, there it is. The, 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 a huge appeal with Alonso, I think, is due to his all... He already has ties to the club. He, yeah. We know him. So therefore, due to familiarity and because of how well he's done this season, we won Alonso. I think when you look at the stats, 
he Ruben's the better choice. That's I don't I don't disagree with that. I think the 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 the, the fear a lot of us have that I you know I'll echo here because I'm 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 leaning I lean both ways. I think. Alonso is a player, and listen, this is obviously a touchy one because a player doesn't necessarily, a great player doesn't make a great manager. We know that. But he has been at the very top level at Munich, at Madrid, at Liverpool. But what I look at more so is what the managers that have been around him have said, specifically two interviews, one with, An not Ancelotti, one with Mourinho, and I think the others with Rafa. And they both said that in terms of a footballing brain, from a coach standpoint, he was a coach before, before you know, even as a player, he was a coach. The way he looked at the game, the way he understood the game was very rare. And Mourinho said in an interview, uh, of all the players in, the, in his phenomenal Galactico Madrid <laughs> that was going to make a great manager, he said Alonso, without a doubt. I think it's because he said his father was a manager. And I think normally when a, when a father of a person is a manager or a player in general, they're able to, the, the player views the game in a different way to the average player. Right? And you see that with Alonso as a manager. So I like that in Alonso. I, I, I have no doubt that Amarim is a good manager. And if he gets the job, great. My worry is more so the step up. I think the one thing that these two managers are, which Klopp isn't, is they're a lot more hands-on in the coaching aspect. Klopp had Bubak, um, and then he's had Linders. Both phenomenal coaches. Linders is going to be a huge miss at Liverpool. He is one of the best coaches in the Premier League, right? And I hope he goes on to be a great manager. If he doesn't get to become a great manager, fair enough. He will always be a phenomenal coach, right? All the way from gra um, grassroots upwards, Linders has built, built up a phenomenal amount of credit in his bank. These lads are a lot more hands-on in the coaching. They're younger. They've got that in them, similar to how Arteta is at Arsenal. Very hands-on. That's a different way for Liverpool. We've not had that. Rodgers wasn't hands-on. Uh Klopp wasn't hands-on in the coaching aspect or isn't hands-on in the coaching aspect. It's a different thing. So how the players respond to that will be interesting. But overall, mate, as I say, it's a 50-50 it's a on this for me at the moment. I have been swayed partially by what I've seen from Tom's propaganda on the timeline, but also just because in general, like you can you can see there's definitely a lot more credit in the bank for Ruben than there is Alonso, but Alonso is familiar, therefore, and also because he has is having what is currently a historic season. You know, you know best luck to him, hopefully it is. There is definitely that urge from a Liverpool fan base to have someone who understands the club. You know what I mean? So that's that's that. Yeah, I put a tweet out earlier as well asking for some opinions. And I just wanted to show two tweets that are in favour of um, Amorim, as Tom would tell us to say. Um, so Takim, he comes on spaces quite a bit. So big up Takim if you're watching. He says, I want Alonso, but he's not a guarantee with other teams interested and him saying no. Al Morim is his own right and has been successful at sporting and is one of the top young managers around with experience, tactically similar to Klopp, reducing drastic change. I think that's important. I think we have touched on that. And there's this other one from Mohammed, and he says, we all know that when Edward was a sporting director, there wasn't any information leaked to the journalists and we all wanted Edwards back, so we should tr trust his choice. And if he chooses Amorim over Alonso, I, 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 you know what? I couldn't agree more with that comment. You know, We've been singing these guys' as praises and when Edwards came back, he, you know, everyone was, not everyone, I think a few people were a bit pessimistic about it, but they, were, they always is those sort of people. But uh, most people were happy that he's back and he's got a big decision to make. And like we've all said, you know, we keep hearing that word data, data, Liverpool do their data. If that is what they're running on earlier and ultimately Edwards does decide that, or not just Edwards, will be a team of them, of course, they decide that Amarim is the best option come game week one of the Premier League, we're just going to have to get behind it, aren't we? And we will, like, you know, Twitter, I said this before, right? I don't want to be disingenuous to people that don't go to games. Because I've been there, you know, it's not always easy to go to games, whether it's because you don't live near the ground or whether it's because of the finances. It's not a cheap thing to do. But the fans in the ground, Elliot, from game week one, whether it's Alonso, whether it's Amarim, dare I say it, touch wood, whether it's De Zerbi, whether it's Nagelsmann, whether it's your mystery choice, which we're going to move on to in a moment. Um, this manager will be backed and this manager will be given time, won't he? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's probably a point that's came up over this weekend with the charity game as well, where people are moaning about like the likes of Torres and a sort of hypothetical one about oh, Casino. Yeah. Going oh, back yeah. and I'm not going to cheer him. It's ridiculous. Every single player is going to give their all on that Anfield pitch. Same with the managers, so the fans are going to 
absolutely give their all back. It was the same when Carrius after that awful, awful final in Kiev. You got the biggest round of applause you could have asked for in the pre-season game. I can't remember who it was against. That's going to be the case for whoever's on the sideline, even if it is the Zeri, which I know is a big people, you know, don't want. And I'm not in favour of them. So <laughs> that's not the mystery choice, don't worry. So it doesn't matter who's on the sideline. It could be bloody Roy, well, maybe not Roy Hodgson, but, you know, it could be Gerard out the blue. And, yeah, you know, it could be anyone. And Liverpool are going to get behind them because there's, there's going to be a title to compete for, there's going to be trophies to compete for, and it's going to be, even though everyone's going to probably be crying their eyes out on the last day of the season when Klopp does his goodbye, and I'm not looking forward to it, as a 48 days now, there's going to be exciting, I think it's an exciting time because this Liverpool team are so young and there's so much fun about them. And then we haven't had a change nine years. We've got to, we can watch Liverpool every single week from next season and point things out from this new manager, whether it be Amarim or Alonso or someone else. So I think that's something to be excited for rather than pessimistic about, even though Klopp is leaving. It's an exciting time because the Liverpool team are fantastic with so much potential. And then you're going to have a new manager who's got so much potential as well, whether it be either of these two. Yeah, and I think you will, to be honest. Um, obviously, we're going to hear from your mystery choice in a moment, which you have been alluding to, so you better not disappoint, Elliot, because there's a lot of pressure on this mystery choice. I know. Um, <laughs> but I do I do personally believe, you know, I've been looking at the odds and I tweeted it earlier. I've done a slide on Deserbi. We're not really going to talk about this guy for too long. But in fact, we're not going to talk. The stats are there if you want to look at them. If not, you don't have to. But he has dropped out of the race now because the reason why I say that is because Pep Linders has now gone up to third favourite. And we know he's going. So what yeah. does that tell you about Deserby? It tells you that, as far as the betting odds are concerned, and guys, bet responsibly, um, <laughs> they're not too far wrong most of the time. So they know what they're doing, these guys that make the odds, you know, these bookmakers. Um, and by going going by that, sorry, Deserby is, is below Pep Linger's now in the race. So for me, I don't see this happening. I think i actually seen that. Um, I think uh, Napoli wanted him. But then... I checked Twitter as Tom Little was uh, talking about his his manager. There's this tweet from a buying page, and this is um, one of the big buying pages. This is um, like their their TAT. Uh, they've got 400,000 followers. Um, in recent weeks, there have been direct contacts between Bayern and Deserbi. Even though Shabby Alonso is a priority for Bayern, Deserbi is also on the list, and the club considers him an interesting coach with suitable characteristics for the top level. The Italian coach is fascinated and flattered by Bayern's interest, but is also waiting to understand all available options. And then guess who's in the replies? I'll make Florian Flettenberg. And the Italian... Oh, look who's in the reply. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I've exposed myself. I said, are you okay? (laughs) Are you okay? (laughs) Nah, because he's gone all in on Shabby Alonso, right? And now he's, he's putting eye emojis for Deserby. So to, to me, yeah, I, I just don't think this guy's a clue. I don't know if any, if any of you guys want to just touch on that. I think he's playing the biggest guessing game of all time. Yeah. He's seen Bayern Munich are, are, are terrible right now. He's clear Bayern Munich fan. And he's trying to put unwanted pressure onto Leverkusen. Um, and, you know, Mike, as we've seen from the Liverpool journalists, Listen, we have yeah. taken a more sort of respectable route. You know, we aren't hounding the, the German press. We aren't putting stories out. Yeah, poor Joyce is dropping the odd article here and there, but that's doing no harm to Leverkusen. This guy is literally yeah. tweeting every other day, Alonso <laughs> to Bayern, Alonso to Bayern. And now he's putting yeah. eye emojis and Italian well, fans. It makes listen, no sense listen. to me. All, all this is, is he is playing the engagement game. You know what I mean? Like he's... Stirring up tw- social media, he's stirring up Twitter to get engagements because that's it's a paycheck and social media is a form of validation, I guess. But it, it is what it is. I, he's ruined his credibility, but he's ruined it long before all of this anyway. And that's I don't mean that disrespectfully to him, but if you see how he's moved on Twitter, it's not exactly a way which I personally deem uh, smart for a for a journalist, you know what I mean? Um, but that's, that's just, as I say, it's just my opinion. I mean, no offense when I say that. Um, but it is what it is. What it is. I, I, everything he says, you take with a pinch of salt, don't you? You don't. He does the eye emojis under the under all the Alonso news. But in saying that, the Deserby thing makes sense because I do think he moves on for Brighton this summer, um, and I do think there'll be movement from Chelsea, from Bayern, from Liverpool, and Alonso. Leverkusen because Leverkusen would potentially have to replace Alonso. So then you go. You know what I mean? But the Pep Linders side of things, like that would be my secret shout is I'd love Linders to stay. Uh, I think he could make a really good coach, probably too soon for him, which I completely understand and respect. But yeah. No, fair enough. 
and Elliot, the time has come. You want to move on to your <laughs> mystery man? I'm trying to think who it is. Have we mentioned well, it? I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed now because he's actually been alluded to about three times, but it is, oh, it is someone who the day after Klopp announced he's leaving, there was three names it was Lanzo de Zerbi, Nagelsman. I would be <laughs> as content as I would be with Nagelsman as Alonso. I think Nagelsman is he's only 36. He went from Hoffenheim, he got, he got them from relegation to Champions League. And I think one of the most important things, because you can look at that Hoffenheim spell and quite quickly dismiss him in the, in Europe, he learned, he, he got knocked out Europe League. He came to us and chatted the big the big I am saying Anfield's nothing special. He learned very quickly that certain stadiums are Anfield being one of them. Didn't come out of the Europa League group stage in that season. Next season gets Champions League again, by the way. Fantastic achievement. Doesn't get out of the group stage again. But he learns, he goes to Leipzig 2018-19, gets Champions League, and then gets to the semi-final and he's beating Jose's Tottenham, Simeone's Madrid. They're horrible, nasty low back teams that Liverpool have, you know, probably struggled against or some form of a low back in the past. So he's he's, he's learned how to do them, beat them. His style is probably the most similar, I would argue, to, to Jürgen's in terms of a four back as well. Went to Bayern, wins the title. The, the pressure of an elite club is already there. He's already done that. And then some mad things happen where he's on course for a treble and gets sacked. Then he's now at Germany. And the, the pressure again goes up another level. He's got the whole country on his shoulders going into European Championships. And as I said before, I don't care. I want him to do really well because I think that will allude more people to how well he is, how good he is as a coach. But it doesn't matter if he does really bad or really good for Liverpool's Edwards and Hughes. Look on data, I think the data's already there for Nagelsmann, who, as we said, Alonso and Amaran, it could be, you know, next decade. Nagelsmann's already got the experience in the bank, and I think he's a fantastic manager. And maybe he's been a bit naive in the past, but I think he should have learned by now that maybe that's not the way to go with certain things. And I think if he does come in, as every manager, by the way, come, any manager who comes in, going to have some mistakes. But I think he can. You think he can learn from them really, really quickly. And I, I've I've really enjoyed watching him since the Hoffenheim playoff game back in 2016. Mm-hmm. And I think I would be as happy with Niles when as with Alonso, to be totally honest. Elliot, I'm, I'm gonna say this. Uh, love and I respect you. Um, if now Guzman is made Liverpool manager, I, I'm I've, sorry, I'm gonna cut you off anyway. But I've yeah, seen. I've seen so many people shrug him off. I don't understand. Maybe you can allude to I'll, I'll, I'm about to say, I'll do it respectfully then. I won't even make a joke. Katie's missus a grass. Don't she lick stories to the press? Well, I read that. <laughs> yeah, she, she was at a relationship and she was at Build and then yeah, uh, she quit. And that was kind of in the background when he was at Bayern. I don't know the whole story, but yeah. that doesn't really allude that to it. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's also a fair thing. Listen, but Elliot, I, I, I won't even make jokes. I'll come at this uh, seriously. So, my a couple of hiccups that I have with now Guzman. One Pedro has just alluded to there. Depending on how Germany do, depends on where we get him. We need yeah. someone that can come in the door straight away, my opinion. But then the other thing as well, and correct me if I'm wrong. Gravenberg's first season at Bayern, now Guzman was manager. Is that correct? Am I right in thinking that? I believe so. it was him. It was him, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was, when you it was, yeah. yeah, it was, which is an issue for me because Gravenberg made it very clear he wasn't comfortable on now Guzman. And he wasn't then comfortable under the following manager. So considering the talent that I think he is, and listen, by no means am I writing off a manager purely for one player. No, of course. But I think when I look at our young talent and I look at now Guzman's lack of history with young players, not to say that he's bad with them by any means, but I think maybe it's, maybe the hindrance is just his age himself or his experience or lack of experience therefore. But then obviously you could say the same about Alonso and the other fella. So maybe I won't make that point, but... It, it's more so I just I don't think yeah uh I just I just don't think he would be the best fit and when I've seen his interviews you mentioned something there which is which I'll come back to which is which I think he's a little bit he's a little bit arrogant but not yet yeah it, that that I saw one comment ages ago going he'll be coming into training on a skateboard which which yeah <laughs> I understand that and I can see why people maybe not jump to him. And I think it might be a bit similar to Zabi. The Zabi's a bit different. He's a bit of a lunatic, isn't he? And the way he plays football is mental. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a, I know I understand that, but I just think Nagelsmann's had all this pressure on him. He's only 36. I, I just like he, he's Alonso, but with more. And I know that sounds a bit mad. And I'm not mm. saying Nagelsmann's best than Alonso right. because Alonso, don't get me wrong, he is my first choice. But if it is not Alonso, we have to look at the other other people. It's what I'm I agree. Side of, I suppose. Oh. Yeah. But, 
if it is, I think Nilesman should really be someone that everyone kind of looks at and respects yeah. his kind of coaching history because he's he is by far one of the best young managers in Europe. He has been for three years, and if he if he manages to go and do something incredible, in Germany, then wow! Because Germany have been down the dumps for quite a good few years. Not see, well. no, see, I won't, I won't, I can't buy that with Germany either. Because I think Germany are in a similar position to England, where they've got a lot of talent there. And I think. To the, their underachievement is not down to sorry, not their their current achievements aren't down to a quality of manager. It's down to it's the bare minimum for them. Like if England succeed in Euros this year, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to turn around and go, "Wow, got a Southgate, what a yeah, man!" No, that's my I point. Mean, yeah. or, I that's, don't think Germany doing well or bad kind of determines well. I agree with that. Hughes and I would stand with Niles, but he's, he's got to be on a list. He was on the list today after he's on the list. I don't doubt that. So I think he's someone I, I remember looking thinking, no, I'm just gonna go get behind, you know, looking more. And I mean he was a good, I think it was a couple of days ago, Germany played France okay, me and this international friendly, but deep deep yeah. back off the bar. And I'm not yeah. going on the Germany stuff, but look how quickly he can influence a style with you know, as we've we've alluded to in the past when we were looking at clock, maybe being the German manager, it's tough to be an international manager and implement your styles. So I do think it's yeah. something that really could I think it'd be really interesting. And I think he's ahead of me for Amarim, but he just behind a lot of that's interesting that you put him second. I, w- I will say a few, few people have said it in the comments here. Uh, it is a it comes back to the Gravenberg thing, and I've, it's been noted a couple of times yeah. here. He's not the only. Yeah, it's player management, and it, by the sounds of it, it's not the only player. Now I'd have to look into that. I'm not going to validate that no, when I. I do remember there was a few kind of comments. I can't remember from who, but, but they always like massive players, don't yeah. they? So but again, to the European campaigns, I'd like to think that'd be something he's, you know, lame from because it's a late. It's, it's, but is that a risk? Is that a risk? Would you would you want to go for a person? My a long a risk on the player so, manager thing, Elliot. On the player manager thing. Sorry, yeah. we're actually having a debate here. I'm, I'm in. I'm in with you. I'm in with you. Yeah. But I still love you, buddy. But like, I, I <laughs> but like, I, I, say, I say this: when when you look at player management at Liverpool specifically mm-hmm. as a football club. That is such a crucial element. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. And we've had managers in the past, Rafa being one. Rafa was a, f- that f- at the time, I know he's had, a, you know, derailed since, but Rafa at Liverpool was a phenomenal manager. Mm-hmm. He was tactically brilliant. But when you look at interviews from Gerard, from Carragher, from Alonso himself, the man management aspect was ultimately his downfall. Alonso mm-hmm. left because of fallout, because Gareth we wanted Gareth Barry, <laughs> ended up with Aquilani. You know what I mean? Like, we don't need Rogers is another example. Rogers originally had phenomenal man, man management, but then whether it was ego or whatever that collapsed, mm-hmm. and as a result, that's what ruined Rogers was man management. Players lost faith, everything fell apart. So then, if I look at Liverpool now, we've got such a good young crop of players. I wouldn't want to bring in a manager that has currently, currently, as I say, he could have learned from it. I don't, I, I mm-hmm. hope he's learned from it, but his current history with young players. And man management isn't good. And I don't think now that would be the right step. If he goes elsewhere, if he went Chelsea or he went Brighton or he went wherever and succeeded, I'd say mm-hmm. I'm, I'm happy. And then I'd, then he'd be on my list. Yeah, but I think no previous not over it. Going back, that would be my point with Amarim is that I think he needs to take an, another step to and maybe another club in, in one of the top five leagues and do so well. But back to now, yeah. wasn't it? I know Liverpool have probably got three massive stand. I mean, four if you count Trent, Allison, Salah, and Van Dijk. So it's a big risk. I understand that, but I think probably the biggest counter argument. Someone's made a comment, uh, Pedro, from before as well. Um, Tuchel's having a hard show as well. You know yeah, I mean? And I think the biggest compliment you can make to now is when they one thousand percent regret happening because he was on course for Cheryl and he would have absolutely done much more than Tuchel. I know he won the That's league. Very true. Won. That's but very true. We have to our massive battle jobs when it comes to things like that. But I think that's the biggest comment you can give, and maybe the biggest counter argument you can make is that they would probably rather go back in time and keep Niles going for the rest of that season, even if there was a couple of rumbles in the background and yeah. see how it plays out. And listen, that's valid. I'd, I'd, I'd not go and Niles win in the S now. I think Alonso, I mean, no, none of us have got one single valid reason to not want Alonso in. But I think Niles has got to be someone who's been overlooked. And I just thought it would be very appropriate to raise the point that he is mm. still one of the best young managers in Europe, even if maybe sometimes he goes about it in a different way. But it's all going to be different without Klopp. <laughs> Why would you? You know what? Yeah, like every every yeah, single one of them. Points. But he's got, look at the style on him. <laughs> he cannot. <laughs> we Hang on a sec. We cannot. Have a manager that dresses like that at Anfield. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, stop he it! Listen, at least I'm hang, in. Hang on. The minute it goes wrong, or if it goes wrong, I can't just say <laughs> the minute it goes wrong. It might not. But the moment it could potentially go wrong, 
he's going to get up. But that's going to happen for every single manager, though, Ben. I think. Yeah, but at least they dress normally. No, no. Here's the thing. Amarin and Alonso, no matter what goes wrong, they both are poster boys. You know what I mean? They both look good in a three-piece suit. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? They know how to dress. Like, Alonso, right, I'll tell you right now, Alonso comes into Liverpool. Let's say it all goes wrong. He'll always have the fan cams. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'll always have the fan cams. He's always yeah. in the <laughs> yeah. allegations. Stevie walking backwards. Stevie walking backwards at Old Trafford. Do you remember that one? Yeah. A terrible manager for Aston Villa, but we've got that one clip of Stevie G walking yeah. backwards. And I was like, Yeah, he's got doing the that. Yeah, exactly. Like, listen, if we lose 4 0, 4 0, all three managers lose 4 0 to whoever, right? Alonso, fan cams, I, I could get over like, it. I'm in, I'm in. Fan cams, I could get over it. Now Guzman looking like Jerry Springer in the early, the early thousands with the, with the weird suits. I, I don't need really that. Help me point here, Ben. By... <laughs> Uh, you know what? The, re- the reason why I brought that up here is it's just a bit of banter. I let you yeah, two go yeah. about it because I don't necessarily. Again, I, obviously, I know it didn't work out from a, a few clubs, but um, I don't want Noel Guzman. I think out of the out of the three, I think he's probably the one who's he's had his chances and he hasn't necessarily delivered. The other two haven't had their chance yet. But yeah, you're right. He's young. Um, before we wrap up, I'm gonna go around everyone. I'm gonna put everyone under pressure. I want your top three in order, and then why? You list off some wild cards, maybe. Yeah, wild yeah. cards. Yeah, if anyone's got a wild, wild card, card, I mean, I'm looking at the odds, and it's Alonso, Amarin, then uh, Lynch's Deserby, then Snarl Guzman, too cool. Me- Mikel Sanchez, Marco Silva. So it doesn't seem like there's going to be too many wild cards, to be honest, unless you go with someone like Zidane or I don't know. But Mourinho. Yeah. Mourinho. Oh, gosh. Um, so mine right. is obviously Alonso, yeah. Amarim, and then it probably has to be Nagelsmann because I don't think there's that many other good managers available right now. Obviously, mm. a manager could become available if Liverpool come knocking, but like to get a manager out of a club if he's already under a contract, he's not planning on leaving like Alonso and Amarin probably already had it in the back of their mind that they're, they're going to leave their respective clubs soon I just don't think there's going to be anyone else really um, that that's on the, the level of those two that could come in I don't know if I'm wrong you guys let me know but you know my top three is Alonso by some distance then it's Amarin I think having heard Tom who clearly I know we're back the but he's clearly done his research and he's spent time looking at Amarin um reading a couple of things, watching a couple of YouTube videos on him. It does seem like he's, he, he is, you know, he's up there with the young upcoming managers in the world. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's Alonso for me, clear number one. Then it's Amarim. Then it's probably an Augustman. Not Deserby. He's nowhere near my top five. Mm. Mike. Great yeah, wild, card, uh, wild card, by the way. He's available. Who would your wild card be, Ben? Stevie G. Just because uh, vibes. Yeah. I tweeted yesterday when I seen Steve. Oh, I'm said, bored. Not, I'm sure. as a, not as a manager by any means, like. But <laughs> just I would love, I would love him to come back to the club in the in the academy or something like that. Um, but stuff it. Why not, Stevie G? Yeah, wild card. I get that. Uh, Alonso's number two, maybe. Uh, my um, my three would probably be Alonso number one, just edging it at the moment. Um, just because I think that. He could be, I think the success of, of Klopp being a person who can come in and instantly unite the fan base, knowing the club already and having a history there. I think it's a really great asset. Um, Amiron, um, or Amarim, rather, I keep saying Amiron. Amarin, uh, yeah, I, number two for me, definitely. I think he's definitely got the pedigree. He's definitely got the history. Um, few, obviously, hesitancies surrounding him, but I wouldn't, if I seen that, if I seen that, I wouldn't be mad at all. Um I don't even have a third. <laughs> I, I don't like the idea of Al Guzman. I don't like the idea of the Zerbi. Uh, Linders maybe would be a nice outside shout. And my wild card, which won't go down well, might be a little bit of a lead balloon. I like Thomas Frank. Um, oh. I no, I know. Listen, no, no, listen. Let me let me make my point. Let me make my point. Let me land. If if we can listen to Al Guzman prop for twenty minutes, I've got I can get a little minute right. on Thomas Frank. By no means do I want him as Liverpool manager. By no means do I think he is in the race. But as a man that I think could make a good top flight manager that I think goes under the radar, it's Thomas Frank. They've got one of the lowest budgets in the Premier League. They've had 10 key players missing for the majority of the season. Last year, they played some of the better football in the Prem. Not the best by any means, but some of the better football. He's got the ability to get the best out of unknown players. 
Um, I think he's one of the main reasons why Mbwemo even is on anyone's radar. Hey, anonymous, but me and you've been on the same wavelength all day. It's all right, man. We miss, we miss with this last point. It's over. It's finished. But I, I like how he views football. And I think what sold me on it was his Monday night football breakdown. Um, I thought he was. Uh, to, be, to be fair, like, I went off like bottom tier or you know mid tier or prem managers. I think this is no by no means I want him. And he probably will never manage a top club, but I like him as a manager because I think the team's very excited to watch Gary O'Neill. I respect I think, that. I respect I that actually. Yeah, no, I like Gary O'Neill. The young manager in his Monday night football was fantastic as well. But yeah. I think for a while, I'm surprised, I'm surprised you've not been mentioned is Inzaghi. In, I know it's another free back, but he's mm-hmm. been absolutely fantastic. And another, maybe more of a wild card, Thiago Master of Bologna. He's been, he's been very, very good this season, but I think the jumper style is far too big, like the Zerbi. <laughs> all right <laughs> but to be clear um, selection these are hypotheticals and we're not actually one in them no, we just appreciate their managerial status <laughs> what do you think of Ariola? Ariola, that's a nice manager. nice shout i do like him as well. yeah, no, no arms no arms <laughs> so your three mike sorry your top three is alonso Amorim. Alonso, no number three really. It's just uh, Alonso uh, Amarim. I, I may, I wouldn't mind Linda's. Yeah, Linda. 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 Uh, yeah, Linda's. Linda's is my third. Like he's that. leaving now. We know. Is he leaving Ajax? Is that actually happening? No, uh, but I can, I yeah, I he's going now. He, he's definitely going. So who knows, on. man? One, uh, the top three: Alonso, Nagelsmann, and then you'd have to say Amarim. But th- there is a good, you know, looking. There's, there's there's other options which we might have to maybe get used to in case in case it all doesn't go our way in the summer because it's a big big turnaround as as Mike alluded to you've even got Barcelona as well with Xavi, Bayern Leverkusen you know there's a there's a ton of managers who are on the move and ton of clubs looking for new managers so we'll have to be open minded. Yeah, and just one thing as well was on that space that I alluded to earlier, people were saying about um, we'll have to buy Alonso for twenty million or something, and if don't get him it's because they're actually a penny pinching but i researched it and david Ornstein said that amarim's also got the same in his contract as well um yeah. i think it was 20 million euros so it might be a bit cheaper for us but it's nothing to do with that so um yeah if, if it's one of those two we're gonna have to buy them out um either way so i just thought oh, that's that for free. <laughs> so it wouldn't surprise me but um yeah, no, it, it sure. seems like the way things are going, and it depends who you want to believe, I guess. But from from what what we've seen, it looks like it's Alonso and Amarim. They're the two that they're going to sit down with. They're the two that they're going to put the project to. And I believe from what we've read and what we've heard from the likes of Paul Joyce that they want Alonso. But again, like Elliot says, it might not all go your way. You've got to get somebody else. You know, Jude Bellingham springs to mind as as we've mentioned before. Um, not necessarily as a like a Amarim as a backup option because I think again that's a bit disingenuous to him, but also but sort of like you know maybe they value them the same and they just see which one they can get. I don't know, but um, yeah, it will be interesting to see how it pans out. But I think the most important thing, guys, is like Elliot says, how many days is it? 40. 40. I think it's 48 now, is it not? Did you tweet two days ago? It was 50, so it might be yeah, 48 to go. We've got yeah. 48 days left with the best manager I've seen at the club in my lifetime. We've still got That's cup true. finals to come, hopefully. We've, we've still got big, big league games go, coming up, and I am at Brighton next week, so I don't know if the stream's going to be released to Sunday. It might have to be Monday, which is fine because it's bank holiday. Everyone should be available. Yeah, hopefully. Like so, um, <laughs> yeah there we are. I'm fine uh, with that. <laughs> I'll do that with I, I swear to God, after this podcast, if that Italian manager takes any points from us, I will be I'm that. terrified for that. Always terrified. about deserving. I'll tell you this, Ben. Can I say this? If if Brighton somehow take points off us, I'm gonna come in here with the nastiest, the nastiest deserving prop. I'm gonna get in here and be like, I always knew he was. Yeah, well, listen, it's not gonna happen because we're gonna beat them three 0 Darwin Nunes is scoring twice, and Mo Salah scoring a penalty. You heard it here first. Um, smash the like button if you're on YouTube. Subscribe to us if you're on YouTube. If you're watching it on Twitter, come over to YouTube because that's where we're trying to grow. Uh, we've already got the followers and the, the interactions on Twitter, which is absolutely incredible. You know, we're one of the fastest growing accounts on here. Um, so, and we don't want that to stop, of course. We're just shy of 400,000 followers, which is unreal. But please, if you can, come support us on YouTube. If you are, um, you know, a loyal TAT follower, you would do that, wouldn't you? You know, 
you'd do that for us. You'd come and show us that support. So please get that done if you haven't already. But uh, we'll be back after Brighton, whether it be Sunday or Monday, we will put a tweet out to let you guys know. Thanks for everybody that's interacted. Thanks to the sponsor, yourfootcard.com. Link in the description, TFT Pod, and we are out. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, guys.